Hello everyone, welcome back to the class of macroeconomics. In today's lecture, we want to continue the topic related to consumption and savings. Therefore, the topic that we are going to address for today is as follows. And by the end of today's lecture, you are going to be able to know some of the answers for these questions. We want to ask how to set up a model to describe the consumption and saving decisions. What is the general tendency of consumption and saving decisions? Finally, we want to see if there is any theory that focuses on the consumption and saving decision. Therefore, we are going to talk about a simple version of a macro model that considers only two periods. And we are going to go through the detail about the setup of a two period model in here. And then we are going to introduce the concept of lifetime budget constraints. After we know the special features of the lifetime budget constraints, we will talk about the factors that will change the lifetime budget constraints. And then based on that, I want you guys to think about how are those factors affect the consumption and saving decisions of the household. And then in today's lecture, we are going to talk about two theories for consumption and saving decisions, which includes the recordian equivalence and the permanent income theory. In the lecture next time, we will talk about more models and theories for consumption and saving decisions. So now let's begin with today's lecture by first look at a two period model. To begin with, we said that for a two period model, we need to make three assumptions. The first assumption we make is that the household make decisions about consumption and savings in this model. The second assumption we made is that in this economy, the goods yields a real return R. So then we do not ask why that the goods in this economy yields a real return, but we just take it as given. The third assumption we make for this model is that the individual in this model only live for two periods. In other words, the person die at the end of the second period. So then let's look at the timeline for this model to have a better idea about uh, how the decisions made in this model. The timeline for this model is that we have two periods. We have period one and period two. We can also write it as t and t plus one. And then in this model, we have the household exogenously given the income. The income occurred at the first period is y1. For the second period, it is y2. For sure, you can write it as yt and yt plus one. Then the household in this economy choose to eat in each period. In first period, it eats C1. In the second period, it eats C2. Finally, the household need to decide how much they want to save. For the first period, the household choose to save Y1 minus C1 because once you decide how much you want to eat, and then you can save the remaining part. Given that you are exogenously given the income Y1 and you choose to eat C1, the amount you save will be Y1 minus C1. So then how much does this household save in the second period? You may say the answer is Y2 minus C2, which is very intuitive, but it end up to be not the case. So then what should be the right answer? Well, let's go to the assumptions. In the assumption, we say that this person died at the end of the second period. Therefore, this person has no incentive to save at all because any saving will be a waste because that person should die anyway. Therefore, in here, we say that the savings need to be equal zero. But then you may say, hey, even though that the saving is zero, it doesn't mean that the savings cannot be y2 minus c2 because it is possible that the y2 minus c2 equals zero. It turned out to be not the case. That is because the c2 in fact is not equal y2. That is because the resources available at the second period will be the amount you save plus the interest you are going to get from your saving last period 
plus the income you receive in the second period. So the resources available at the second period is Y1 minus C1 multiplied by 1 plus R and then plus the I2. So then this is the amount of the C2. So the saving need to be equal to zero, but we also know that the C2 in fact doesn't equal Y2, but it equals Y1 minus C1 multiplied by 1 plus R plus Y2. We argue that a rational individual will choose to consume all the resources available at the second period because that person died at the end of the second period. If they don't consume all the resources available, it will be a waste. Now, let me show you the timeline again and to see that in detail. In here, we have period one and period two and what happened between the period one and period two is one period. So then in the first period, the individual is born with the endowment or the initial wealth, we call it A0. And then that person can receive the income that is Y1 exogenously from outside of the model. So it is something given. And then the household will choose how much they want to consume. And then in the second period, the individual will receive another income exogenously which is Y2, and then the individual will choose how much they want to consume, and that is C2. In addition to that, something else happened in the second period is that by the end of the second period, that person dies. So under this model, given that we can save the income in the first period and use it in the second period, Therefore, when we are making the decision about how much we want to consume in the first period and the second period, in fact, that we are looking at the lifetime resources that we have instead of looking only at the resources we receive at each period. Therefore, we introduce the concept that is called the present value of the lifetime resources, which is about how to add up the resources that you get during your entire lifetime. We abbreviate this term as PVLR, which is the present value of the lifetime resources. So now let's look at what are the resources you have or that individual have during the entire life. This person will going to have the current income or the first period income from outside of the model. In the second period, this person will receive another income, which is from the first period's perspective, it is the future income. So in here we say in the second period, we receive Y2 and we call it the future income. In addition to that, if this person is born with a wealth, then that person will have something called initial wealth and we denote it as A0. So to understand what is the total amount of the resources we have in our entire lifetime or for this individual, we need to add up all the resources we have, given that all these resources are happening at different dates. So we know that we cannot simply add them up. We cannot just add up Y1 and Y2. Instead, we need to convert the Y1 and Y2 to the same date or in the same units in terms of the time, then we can add them up. Therefore, we need to adopt the concept of the present value. We say that the present value of the lifetime resources will be the Y1 plus Y2 over 1 plus R plus A0. The reason why the Y1 at A0 doesn't need to be divided by 1 plus R is because it is the income and the wealth at the initial date or in the date currently, which is T equal 1. So we don't need to discount it. But when we want to add up the income we receive in the second period, because it is one period afterward, therefore we need to discount it back to T1. So it is Y2 divided by one plus R. So in sum, this is the present value of the lifetime resources. It is equaling Y1 plus Y2 over one plus R plus A0. So when we are talking about the resources we have, we talk about the lifetime resources 
and we add them up and we introduce the term that is called present value of the lifetime resources. Then when we want to talk about consumption, we also need to introduce the idea that is um, about how to add up the lifetime consumptions we have. And the term we introduce here is called the present value of the lifetime consumption. So again, what we know is that in the first period, we consume C1, and in the second period, we consume C2. And the C1 related to current consumption, and C2 related to future consumption. Because of that, we say the present value of the lifetime consumption equals C1 plus C2 divided by 1 plus R. Again, in here, because the current consumption is the consumption at current time, therefore we don't need to discount it. However, for the future consumption, it is the consumption occur at the next period. Therefore, the amount that we consume at the next period is not in the same unit as the amount we consume in the first period. Because we know if we save in the first period, every $1 will become 1 plus R in the second period. Therefore, the second period consumption's value, in fact, equals C2 over 1 plus R in today's goods unit. Now we want to compare the present value of the lifetime consumption versus the present value of the lifetime resources. As you recall that what we talked about a few minutes ago, we said that this person dies at the end of the second period. Therefore, as a rational individual, you want to eat up all your resources by the end of the second period. Because of that, we want to um, plan ahead to see how much we want to consume in the first period and the second period, such that we will be the happiest. And then so, but we know for sure that at the end of the second period, we need to eat up everything we have, otherwise it will be a waste. Therefore, when we compare the present value of the lifetime resources versus the present value of the lifetime consumption, it turned out that if the present value of the lifetime consumption is less than the present value of the lifetime resources, it means that the amount that you eat is less than the total resources available to you from the present value's perspective. Because of that, you eat less than the resources, so it will be a waste. Because by the end of the second period, this person died. If you eat less than the resources you have, then it means that you dump all the remaining parts into the sea, and you don't want to see that happen. On the contrary, if the present value of the lifetime consumption is greater than the present value of the lifetime resources, it is somehow preferred because you can eat more than what you have. However, you cannot do that because you cannot afford it. Therefore, we cannot choose the present value of the lifetime consumption greater than the present value of the lifetime resources. Therefore, toward the end, we are going to get that eventually the household or the individual will choose the present value of the lifetime consumption equal to the present value of the lifetime resources. Therefore, in equations, we are going to have C1 plus C2 over 1 plus R equal Y1 plus Y2 over 1 plus R. If the initial wealth equals zero, we can write this equation like that. And uh, we have a name for this equation. We call that this equation is the lifetime budget constraints. Sometimes people will call it as the intertemporal budget constraints. Of course, that if you want to consider the initial wells in here, you can also add in the A naught.